Zok to Hillel Gemara, the second to the last line. Omer Rabbi Levi, Kol de Moshev Milo, Kamei Rabbi, anybody who paskets halacha in front of his Rabbi, Ozo L'Sha'oil Beloi Vlad, he's going to end up dying without children. Shenemar, Vayan Yeshua Benun, Mishores Moshe, Mibachura, this is when the when Eldot and Medot um, were saying Nevoa, Yeshua wanted to be Moshe on the cover of Moshe Rabbeinu, and he suggested to Moshe what the appropriate action to take would be. And he said, Vayemer Adoni Moshe Kalayim. That was, and that was um, the Havale Kemoyer Halacha. That was considered like instructing Moshe with a Psak Halacha. That was inappropriate. Uchsiv, and it says in Divrei Yomim, Nun Benoi, Yeshua Benoi. But it doesn't talk about the benoy of Yeshua. And Rashi says, Uvashu Yeshua, Lechosh Ben, Yeshua died without any children. I, I don't see why it should be against it. He only said it for the covet of, he was defending the covet of Meshra being in, in that statement. I don't see how it's uh, paskining or even he's making a suggestion that all people surrounding a king are his advisors that's what that's their job really i hear but, but i guess on um, someone on yeshua's level shouldn't even have done that he should have been silent and let moshe obey uh, take the appropriate action it was <laughs> what's that Chavzi? it was unsolicited advice right. Right. If Akiva was here, I would remind him. But it was a defense, a de defending Moshe Rabbeinu's covet. Uh, I guess. Okay? And I he, guess when you're when you're Shurebi, even defending his covet could be considered a tefiyah. Yeah. Who do you think you are to defend him? <laughs> <laughs> He's his greatest disciple. Who else should defend him? I guess Moshe the thing is, Moshe was a big boy. It's it's belittling, belittling his his stature that he needs you to come to his defense. Well, he's a none of Mikal Adam. He needs somebody to defend him. Well, Adam doesn't mean he's a wuss. Moshe was 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 strong. He was the leader of Israel. He could be very tough. Look what he did, Koyach. But uh, I hear what you're saying. To you and me, that might not be considered a mere. You self. know, an attack against Klai Yisrael will defend. An attack against himself, you know, he's an honor, he won't defend so quick. You know, Koyach was an attack against Moshe. That's true. But it's also an attack against the Messiah of the Torah. Uh -huh. Okay, that was the bigger that that was the bigger problem. Okay, if you can't trust Moshe Rabbeinu, the whole tire goes down the toilet. I hear, I hear, right? I, mean, I hear the time. The vice choice was a was a Tanya and Yeshua. It just happened once before. There's a whole shtickle that we learned in the Sichas about what the issue with 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 uh, Pinchas was, and they said to ben Pitus ben Pit Pitusu shepite avi. Imoi, a golem of a and the tanya that they had on Pinchas is who do you think you are getting up, killing Zimri and Cosby, and not letting Moshe do it? So there was also all the, all the nations, all the Shvatim ganged up on Pinchas. Why would you take a stand when Moshe was there? So, uh, One of the things that we could see is that we see that from Moshe Rabbeinu's response to Yehoshua. Is that it was unwarranted and it was wrong. Uh -huh. Very good point. You think you're you think you're still in for my covet? Calm down. Everything's just just fine. Alavai, everybody should be like yeah. that. And then the flip side by Pinchas, it was the right thing to do. And he and that's what he ended up doing. So I think Yeshua could have said, Pinchas jumped in when there was an issue, so why can't I? But by the choice, when Pinchas did it, it was appropriate. And when and when uh, you should, it, there was not. Well, Pelika der Rabbi by Papa. So they learned that <coughs> the Oynish, why Yeshua did not have children, is because he was Moira Lachat Rabbi. 
But Papa, Rav Abba Bar Papa, learned that the reason why you should have children was due to a different chet. Tomer Rav Abba Bar Papa, Loi Nena Shi Yeshua, Ela Bishvil Shabita Las Yisrael Laila Achas Mi Peri Yom Rekia. He held the Jewish men apart from their wives for one night. And that one night was so severe that because of that, um, he didn't have children. So now let's learn this Pasuk inside and let's learn this story about what occurred. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal story. Everybody knows the story. It was it was, it was was uh, after Yerichai, before I. It says, Yeshua when Yeshua was in Yerichai, they were camping out one night in the, on the battlefield, preparing for the battle that they were going to have tomorrow. Or waiting, not preparing, but waiting for the battle that they were going to have tomorrow. By Yisa Enov, he picked up his eyes, by Yar, and Yeshua saw, There was a man that was presented himself opposite Yeshua with a, with a big sword in his hand, and of course it was a Malach. And Yeshua went up to him and told him, Do you belong to us or are you from the enemy? And we're going to learn in our Gemara. And I think it's in, it's in Nathan Mesech as well. Toysus is much, but Yeshua knew that clearly this Malach that came with a threatening stance was coming to mon Yeshua for an aver that he did. And Yeshua asked, are you here because we didn't learn Torah? Because we had middle Torah, which is to us for the Aveira of Torah Tziva, Lanu Moshe, and that's what Lanu stands for, or Imlut Tzarein, or are you coming to mon me because we didn't bring the Tomich Albein Harbaim yesterday, we were in the middle of a battle. We were in the middle of a battle, and due to the battle, we were not able to bring the Tomich Albein Harbaim, and Toysfer says, Shemegin Aleinu, that protects us, Mitzareinu, from our Tsars. So, Halonu, are you coming to Monmi for the Avera, Middle Torah, of Torah Tzil Alonu Moshe? Or in the Tsareinu, are you here to Monmi for the Avera of the Mavatl of Carbon Tom? And the Malach answered, Loi, Kani Savar Tzava Hashem, Atabazi. I am a Malach of Hashem, I came for now. Vayibo Yeshua upon it. And then later it says, And we learn, Toysvist tells us there that Ata Bossi, the Malach said, I'm coming for Ata, which is the Voyer of Bittal Torah, that says, the Ata kiss Kulachem as a Shira Azoi, Siva Mephiem, teach Klal Yisrael Torah. So the Malach answered, I'm coming to mourn you for the Voyer of Torah. And then right away, a couple of seconds later, it says, so literally it means he was in the valley. But the Gemara Darshan means he went and he made sure that the Olam was sitting and learning star. So he went, he went to be Mesakin, the Avera of Middle Torah. That is the event that the Gemara describes occurred between Yeshua and the Malach. So before we look at the fun of the let's look at what the Gemara says. So the Gemara says, in fact, there was another Avera that had occurred as well. I came, Rashi says, for Atta. The Thomas Obed Arbayim, you were Mavatl yesterday afternoon. Bittal Torah is at night. During the day, you were busy fighting a war. At night, you're just waiting for tomorrow. They didn't have infrared vision in those days. So at night, they didn't fight. And they were just waiting overnight. And then tomorrow they were going to mount their next attack. But overnight they weren't learning. So the time it was, why were they learning? At the boss, you're coming to mon you for their there that you're doing now. Omelah the Malach told him, Yesterday, <coughs> meaning before dark, you did the Aver in Batl Tom Shobain Abayim. The Asha Pitaltim Talmudim. So the Malach said, You did two Averis. Al Azim and Boss. So Yeshua asked him, so which Aver are you coming to collect for? I'm coming for the Aver of now. Right away it says, They learned that night, he 
He said, okay, everybody sit down and we're going to sit over there. Gemiri, we learned. The Chalzman, Sha'or, the Shechid, the Shuri, and Shalom, and Kodim. When they went to fight Ai, they had the Oren with them. So the Oren is in camp. The Oren is out of its place in the camp, preparing for battle. When that situation occurs, a Surah Gatash Meshamita. Helpers are not allowed to engage in relations. Now, overnight, they weren't fighting the battle. They could have went home. He didn't have to keep everybody out there. So why did he? So there was a third of error, Rabbi Yechelin tells us, occurred here. And that was the error of Tashra Shemitah. And that's not what the Malach was looking for, but there was another error that he did as well. And because of that, he didn't have children. That's how Rabbi Yechelin, Rabbi Yechelin learns that the fact that he didn't have children was due to this error, not to the fact that he was in Mughal Allah. So Frank the Panamit wrote an awesome fashion. If I ask you a question, is the answer A, or is the answer B? Is the answer, is the answer, is the reason why you're mourning me for my aver because I was involved with the Tamil children or I was involved with Torah? And let's say the answer is B. So why did the Malach say B? The Malach should have said, um, uh, which is Torah Tzivu Lanu Moshe. But the Malach wanted to answer Yeshua to tell him that he was mourning him for a bit of Torah. He used the word Ata, which either means the aver of now, or like Toysha says, it means the aver of Bittal Torah, because there's the Atta Kitz for the is the Shira Zois. So if I ask you a question, is it A or B? You don't say, Lord, you're making a mistake. I came for C. You, you answer, yes, you're right. It was option B. So there's two questions here. A, why did the Malach tell Yeshua, Lord, and Yisach Hashem, like Yeshua made a mistake? Yeshua didn't make a mistake. One of the options that he chose was correct. And B is, why did he use a different Nusach? He asked, Yeshua asked him, is it for the Ver of Lonu? So the Malach should have said, yes, Lonu. Why did the Malach say Atom? Zok the point of the a beautiful, beautiful word. Is that you think, Yeshua, that the mitzvah of Talmud Torah is a mitzvah like any other mitzvah. Torah Tziv Lonu Moshe, my Rosh Yaakov. It's merely a tradition. It's merely a standard mitzvah. Well, if that was the case, you would have been justified in being Mavatal Torah, the Mavatal the carbon Talmud, because you're Oisik B'mitzvah, you're in the middle of a Melchemist Mitzvah, Oisik B'mitzvah, part of the Mitzvah. But you're wrong, Yeshua. You misunderstand what Torah is. Torah is Atavasi. It's the Ata Kitzvah Lachem. It's the Shira as I see them. It's a Shira. It's the whole purpose of our existence is to learn Torah. The whole purpose of our existence is to learn Torah. And the Ayyib without Torah, like Rabbi Kiva said, is like a fish without water. You can't survive. So Zok the Malach to Yeshua, if Torah was Stama Mitzvah, I wouldn't come in money for it because the Oishit the Mitzvah part of the Mitzvah, just like Bitla Talmud. But you're making a mistake, Yeshua. Torah is much more important than just being a Mitzvah. Torah is our very life. And that, even in the time of war, you cannot be in battle. And in fact, Yeshua went and was Masakin that by the Yom Yeshua to Emek, they ended up sitting in the Beautiful the the, the uh, Yeshua was elderly already by that time when this event happened. He lived another 14 years, so he was well into past his uh, prime of having children. Uh, so I, I, why didn't he have children till then? I hear. So you want to tie him maybe until then he didn't have children because he was more aloha, and now it extended the exerted. <coughs> I hear it's a very good aura. When the guy is 90 years old without children and he doesn't have very, you can't blame it on that. That's right. I hear. I hear. I'm Rabbi Shmuel Bar Inya. Mishmei the Rav. God will tell you Torah, Yosem my Akravas to meet him. Tell him Torah is greater than Akravas to meet him. The Amar Elay Atavasi. Because the Malach himself said, I'm not here to mourn you for the affair of being the battle of the Karbonis, but I am taking you to task that you're about to learn. Again, with the Pelevo Chiroves, it, it, it's beautiful. If someone sleeps in the same tent or the same uh, structure that a husband, a couple sleeping in, naturally they're not going to engage in relations when there's a when there's a party pooper over there. So all of the Torah says about such a person, Neshe Ami 
to Gershon, he based Tanuk. They're chasing away the women of my nation from the home of their pleasure. In other words, you're causing the couple not to be together. That's a big apple. Even if, even if it's usher for her to be with her husband that, that night, you still shouldn't be um, destroying their privacy. Rav Amar, if the, the woman is a nida, then it's a, it's a good thing. You should be convinced that he's sleeping in the room, preventing anything from happening. But that's not true. The Adidna Manatre, they don't need your help. Until now, they were doing just fine, even though she was Anita, without you, nosy Parker, plopped into their bedroom. Now that she's Anita, they don't need your help. Thank you very much. Ahumavua, there was a Mavoy, Davidarya Bay, Davidarya Bo, Lachman Baristak. Lachman Baristak was a Goy, and he lived in the Mavoy. And we know if a Goy lives in the Mavoy, he messes up your ability to make an Arab Chateris, unless he's willing to rent you his property for Shabbos. So Amrule, the people of the Mavoy, told him, Oh, your Lord, Rishusach, be so kind and rent us your Rishusach so that we can create ourselves an Arab. He didn't want to do that. He said, no. Also, the members of the community went to Abaye and told him, we have a problem with this guy. What should we do? So we, we, I, I don't know why Abaye didn't tell him to move out. You're not supposed to live with the guy. But Abaye felt bad for him. He told him, I have a good idea for you. You can all be Mavak and Rishus to one Jew amongst you. And now it's one Jew and one Goy. And now you can be Soymach and your brothers with Yaakov that when there's one Jew and one Goy, the Goy does not serve. Have a Yochid Bemokim Nochri, the Yochid Bemokim Nochri, Loy Osar, because we pass on like our brothers with Yaakov. Omer Lehi, so I told him, Abaye, see, if a Rav gives me a heter, I don't question it. I go and I take the heter. But they questioned the heter. They told him, Midihu Taima, why did Revelation Yaakov say, that one goy and one yid is not a problem. Because it's very uncommon for one Jew alone to buy a house in a goyish neighborhood because he's afraid the goy will kill him. But here, they're living there. So it should still be a problem. So I told him, okay. Just the mere fact that you're all being mevat on your shoes. To one Jew, that also is something that's highly uncommon. And since this is an unusual structure, <coughs> the Rabbanon would kosher in this case. So Abaye really gave him a very big kula to be able to make this Erev, this Erev Chatzeris. Also, Ravuna Bered Abishua, Ravuna Bered Abishua, Armor Lashmaitza Kameh Rabba. He told Rava, did you hear about this incredible kula that Abaya just offered up to these people from that moment? Amrle, Rava said, if you're going to allow people to do this, if, if Abaya is going to be make up to that effect, to that extent, that'll let people in the vatal de Rishos, and then there's no Erev, im can be taught the Taurus Erev, then there's no Erev there. So there won't be an Arab there at all. It's just one and one. If it's one and one, there's no Arab at all. Zakhtamar, no, the Maravi. Abai said, Avadi, you have to make an Arab. You have to make an Arab and Bavat Roshos. And that's why he allowed it. Frekti Gemara, Frekti Rabbi, that's also not a good Psaac. Yoyru Arab, Moyal, Bemokim Nochr. People are going to say that you could make an Arab even though there's a guy there. So that's not a good idea. Zakhtamar, the Machserino. The Macharizino, they made an announcement. They announced, Have you you should know. The Arab that we're making in this neighborhood really is not accomplishing anything. And we're not taking stuff from our culture to the Mavi. We are carrying in it. Because everything belongs to one person. We're in Mavatla. So we went through the motions of making an Arab so people shouldn't forget about Arab, but we also announced that it's not really the Arab 
that's accomplishing our head. Zok to Mora. Deep sorry? in my uh, Yosef Zalman. <clears throat> yes. Deep down, I'm wondering if Abaya was really afraid of a goy. And that's the reason why he did it. Uh, as I say, with a bunch of Shaila, if Shaila would have told him to tell the goy, other baigin, other laigin. You know, if Shaila Shai used to always tell a goy who was causing the two problems, yeah. other baigin, either give in, uh-huh. give in, other laigin, or drop dead. I'll give uh-huh. you a choice. So uh, <laughs> so they should have said that. But uh, he didn't say that. <coughs> so Dr. Gore, Acharasto, the Dardiki, this, this announcement that you're going to make might inform the adults that this is a special arrangement. But the little children that grew up in that neighborhood won't know anything about Erevin. Zok to Gemara, El Amarava, I'll tell you what you should really do. This is something more common. Lezel Chad Minai, Likarevli. One person, one Jewish person of that neighborhood should go become friends with the guy. Take him out for coffee, buy him tickets to a leaf game, and become good friends with him. And after he becomes your good friend, then and ask him, do me a favor, Jack. Can I leave uh, my lawnmower in your hut, sir? I don't know, my, shed, my shed's full. I'm busy putting my soka back. Let me put my lawnmower just for a couple of days. Let me put it in your uh, in your hut, sir. And you should put some of his objects in the guy's property. The Havalei Keschiro Yolokita. Then you have the status of somebody who's a schir, meaning who works for the, he lives by the guy and he works for him all year. Or Lakita is someone who's a seasonal worker who works for the guy seasonally. What's the advantage of becoming a, a worker of the guy, uh, a seasonal, or either a permanent or a seasonal worker of the guy? If you live by the goy because you work for him, then you could represent the goy, and you can give an uh, Arab, you can give some food to contribute, contribute to the Arab, and that'll be good enough. So by you becoming the Shira and looking at the goy, you could now be his agent and have a Hilchus Arabin, and then use an Arab, and that's a better way to deal with this problem than what Abayi said. Omer lay Abayi on the So Abayi asked the for the following question. How you show Chamisha, Schiroi, the Heilikidei? What if a Goy had 10 people working for him? He had 10, five full-time workers and five seasonal workers. Now we know that if you're a Schir of a locket of a Goy, you could represent him fully with your Erev. Well, what if there's 10 Jews that worked for the guy? Do each 10 have to give part of the Arab because they're each 10 have a schus? Or since all they're doing is representing the guy's portion, one of them who gave it the Arab would be enough. That was the child of Abayah Ashraf. Now, do they all have to give? Or is it enough if one person gives? Overlay, so Rabbi Yosef answered back his Talmud Abayah. Just because Chazal made a kula that someone who lives by the Goy can represent him and contribute to the Arab on behalf of the Goy, do you think that they would say to Homer as well that each one of these 10 people have to contribute? Avada not. If even one of them contribute to the Arab, it'll be a good Arab. Gilfa. Even if he just works for the guy and he's living by the guy, he can represent the guy and make the contribution to the Arab on the guy's behalf. Ah, what a beautiful Torah. Ah, it's a beautiful Torah. I love hearing it. If someone drank a Revius of wine, I love this Gemara. Shazer Viasai, that person drank a Vias of wine, Al Yoira, he's no longer lucid enough to be able to be a dying to be able to pass me. Omar Ibn Nachman, Ibn Nachman said, I don't like that Allah. You know why? This is the best line. Until I drink 
a review of wine, I'm, I don't think clear. I only think clear when I'm under the influence. <coughs> but, but that's a man that I can understand. So therefore, uh, therefore Nachman didn't like that you have to be sober. If I care it, with a little, with a little alcohol, it calms me down. It allows me to focus. Omali Rabbah. So Rabbah said, "My timer, Omer Marachi, Rav Nachman. How could you say something like that? That you're picking and choosing what Torah you like and what Torah you don't like?" Omer of Achabar Chenino, my dechsev. It says in the pasuk, "Berei Zaynois Yoyver Hain." Someone who sees prostitutes will lose his money. Will lose his farmaker. And we darshan Zaynois. And we break the word up, and we dash it this way. So zu nois, zu na, zu That's what zonish means. So someone who picks and chooses between gemaras, I like this shot, I don't like that shot. Ma'abit He's destroying the fortune of the Torah. He's for, he's ruining the fortune of the Torah. So how could how could you do such a thing, Rav Nachman, to say I like this? Halacha, I don't like that halacha. Omelay, I'm not going to send right out. Hajubi, I'm closer. I take it back. You're right. I take it back. I shouldn't say that. <coughs> so it's Omer, to review it, you can't make, you can't pass it after he makes kiddush. That's right. Mm. That's right. That's right. Omer Rabbi Barafuna, unless, unless, unless if the drinking helps him to think better. It really helps him. This is very, very simple. Rabbi Huda was on the shit, and Rabbi Nachman was a chsidah shit. Someone who drank wine, all his spell. He should not have them his spell, the vidavins, to village it's feel still a good feeling. However, shikr, someone who's drunk, all his spell, the him is pal to village it. So not appropriate, someone drunk should have. Frankly, more hech a dummy shossi, the hech a dummy shikr. To what at what point are you a shossi? Where you're a lot of diamond, or where your tefillah is at least good, and at what point is your tefillah to That's very subjective. <laughs> well, look at the Gemara answers. It's not giving a limit in amount of alcohol consumed. It's giving a limit based on how a person uh, holds down his alcohol. They were um, saying goodbye to each other. It was after Yom Tif and they were separating, going home. Amabra and Nahar Yufti. And where were they um, leaving each other? Where were they uh, separating? At the bridge to the, the uh, Yufti River. Omru, they said, Each one of us should teach our, our friend something that we didn't learn before. We'll, we'll each share it by Allah. The Amr Mari Barat, who knows? The best way to say goodbye to somebody is by telling them about Because this way, any time he learns this aloha, he'll remember, oh, I remember the very first time I learned this, my friend taught it to me as we were gazaging from each other. So one of the two said, So this is the question that we are dealing with. So the Gemara shares this story in which this Indian was discussed. So he said as follows, If someone could still speak properly and make a presentation in front of the king, even though he drank, that someone who, if he davens, is tefillah is a good tefillah. Once someone wouldn't be appropriate to speak in front of the king, he's no longer maintaining his composure and he's no longer in control of his words. He's someone who can't speak into the king, he's someone who feels the table. So like Tumi said, it's very subjective. Every person reacts differently to alcohol, and depending on your matzav, uh, you would, your, your matzav would, would dictate whether or not your feel is a good feel. Now that we started with the story, we want to hear what the other person said, who was saying goodbye. But Allah is, a ger has no yorsha, because ger is is kair, so when a ger dies, all of his nechasa become hefker, and basically it's first come, first serve. So this fellow was, while everybody was saying to him by the ger's deathbed to hope that he'll survive his illness, this guy said, wait, I got to go for a second. He runs out to the ghost field and made sure to be, to make a Kenyan, to be there by the tear of the ger 
so that he could continue on the legacy of the gear, not for himself, he wanted to take ownership of the gear's property so that he could continue the gear's legacy. And he became a multimillionaire overnight when the gear died. Why was he crying during the Shabbat? So, Lamaisa, <clears throat> money, easy come, easy go. What should he do? My yasa, the Yiskai Mubuyado. What should he do with the money that um, that it'll, it'll help him retain that wealth? He shouldn't have easy come, easy go. Like Rashi says, it's like winning a lottery. People are like a little shocked. How does he have all this money? He got this money without work. They're not going to maintain themselves by this person unless he solidifies his grasp over these nechosim by doing a mitzvah with it. So what should he do? He should donate a sefer Torah in memory of the gear who was his benefactor. Doesn't say that. If he says he should buy a sefer Torah. So you do a mitzvah with the money, not all the money, part of the money, and then you'll be able to keep the rest of it. Armab Sheshis, Afilu If someone does a rich shidduch and he uh, gets a lot of money of Nechasim from his wife, that's also money that's easy come, easy go. And he should also do a mitzvah with that money. Rav Omar, Rav said, Afilu Avar Iska for If you did a business deal, you made a lot of money, you should also right away do something, do a mitzvah with some of the money, so that, that'll make it your money. <coughs> Even if you found something on the street and you found something valuable, you should do a mitzvah with some of the money. You don't have to go spend $70,000 on a safe retire, but even if you buy yourself a new pair of film for two and a half thousand dollars, that's also something that's good. My crop, where do you find the positive that indicates hints towards such an idea? The Chsiv says, when they were about to confront the Moloch, and they said, and they promised that they're going to give over all the cities to Chayim. Um, so you see there's such a thing as by giving something away, by doing a mitzvah with some of the Nechosim, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to retain what you have. Amar Rabbi Bar Abba, Derech Mil, if you walk for a mill, or Vishina Koshu, if you take a nap, Mafigin is So if you had a little bit too much to drink, and you want to get rid of your, your wine head, you want to get your clarity back, either go for a little walk for a mill, or go for a little nap. Amar Black Amar Abba Bar Abba, Loi Shalu, this halacha, that a little walk can help you for wine is El Shashasukatevis. That's only if you drank Ravis. Abu Shas Yoisha Miravis, if you drank a lot of wine, more than Ravis, then Koshika and Shadirh Tertasai, going for a walk will actually make it worse. The Shinam Shakarta and taking a nap will make it even worse. Period. Frank Lamar with Derek Mill Mafigayai. Regular wine, wine that's a Ravis. Are you suggesting that if you only drank Ravis, walking a mill will be enough? To clarify your mind, but Tanya, we had a story. was traveling on a donkey. He was traveling from the city of Aku to the city of Chazid. was walking behind him. There was a loaf of bread on the floor, on the rope. Amr Loi, Rabbi Yochanan called out. I'm sorry, Rabbi Gamliel called out to Rabbi Loi. Eloi. Toil Gluskin in there. Pick up that loaf of bread. Don't eat it. Just hold on to it. They continue to travel. And Motsunach Yechot, they bumped into a goy. Omer Loi, Megaboy, Mebagoy. He called him by his first name. How in heavens, Rabbi Gamliel knew this goy's first name? I don't know. Written of Goy. Toil Gluskin Alolim Eloi. You see that piece of bread, that loaf of bread that my buddy Eloi has? Take it from him. <coughs> so Eloi gave the guy the bread, and Eloi was 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 curious. He was intrigued. Who is this Mavgoi that Rabbi Gamliel offered him my loaf of bread? So he connected a little bit to the guy to start talking to him. He engaged him. Where are you from? I come from a tent city. I'm a I'm a floater. I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 
on the um, what's the word for it when you move from place to place? Bedouin. Uh, it was Trans- Bedouin, but there's a word for it. Transient. Transient. I'm a transient. I would use that for boaters. Tra- a, <sighs> most of Marines have slips for transient boaters. I'm a transient. Mashimcha. What's your name? So the guy said, Mav, Mavgoy Shmani. My name is Mavgoy. So he asks him, Kluma here, Kercha, Rabbi Gamil Mayum. Did you ever meet Rabbi Gamil before? He knows your name. Amaloy Love. Never ever met this man in my life. So Ba'uzu Shah, Bamadu, Rabbi Loi said, at that time from this story I learned, Shakivan of Gamil, Berucha Kaidish. Rabbi Gamil must have known this fellow's name, Berucha Kaidish. How else could he possibly have known that this guy's name was not Boy? And then we learned three halachas from this and Hoga that Rabbi Gamil did. We learned that you're not allowed to pass by when there's food left on the floor. We also learned from the fact that he didn't let Rabbi Loy eat that bread, he made him give it away, is that we have to assume that since most Ayyubidrachim are going, this is Pasakum. And he didn't want Rabbi Loy to eat that Pasakum. Ah, he gave it to a guy. And he had a no. When you give something to a guy, you get to have a no. When you give hockey tickets to a guy, you're not giving it to him because you love him. You're giving it to him because you expect him to, 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 to pay back the favor. So you're going to have to have a sonar from him. <coughs> it must have been after Pesach. And this was Chomet, so it was bread. But it belonged to a guy. So it must be that that's Mutabano. And that's why Rabbi Yechenin didn't, Rabbi Gamliel, didn't have to destroy the bread. He was able to give it to the guy as a gift. Kivan Shagil Chesiv, when they arrived in Chesiv, someone came to Rabbi Gamliel, who had made a nether, and he wanted Rabbi Gamliel to be mad at him. He asked Rabbi Loi, who was with him, did we not drink Yain Haitalki, this Italian wine, on the way? He said, yes, we did. And became Rabbi Gamliel said, I can't pass it yet on this nether. Let him walk behind us and we'll continue going until <coughs> the wine, our minds become lucid again after having drank the wine. The Taila Haredi Gimel Mil, not the one mill that we learned earlier would be enough. What was it? Who said one mill? Rami Bar Abbas said one mill is enough. No, but he went three mil. Until they got to the cliffs of Tsur. We actually had this, um, also regarding Ervin, that there's a big drop off, there's a cliff there that sh- should act as a as a wall. Kilan Shagila Sumatsur, when he arrived there, Yarid Rabagam he got off the donkey, and the satif, and he put on his talus to, to be a Bezdin. The Yoshav, he sat down, Vitla Hidra. The Harbid Vorm Lamadabas. We learned a lot of things from this whole story. We learned that a Raviyasiyah Nitalki makes him drunk. And that's why Rabbi Gamliel <coughs> needed to continue moving to get his clarity back. We learned that a shikr should not pass him. We learned that traveling, which Rabbi Gamliel did for three mil, um, allows the wine to settle so he should get his clarity back. You're not allowed to be made for another when you're riding, not when you're walking, and not when you're standing. He has to be sitting, and that's why Rabbi Gamil had to sit down. It said that Gamil traveled three mil. Didn't Rabbi say earlier one mil was enough? Italian wine is stronger than standard wine, and that needs a longer walk. So <coughs> you should need, you should need, uh, if you drank water the Ravias, which maybe he drank, uh, walking makes it worse. It doesn't make it better. So you're right, Rach of Shiny. He didn't get off his donkey. He rode for three mil. Riding will uh, make someone lucid. So Hash is lucky. Now that you're making a distinction between riding and walking, your kasha originally, why Rabbi Gamil needed three mil, when Rabbi Ba'ab said one mil is enough, if you drank a little bit of wine, if you walk a mil, 
that'll walk off the wine. But if you don't walk, you sit on a donkey, then you got to sit on a donkey for three mil. Because any is that so? How could you say Rabbi Gamliel only wanted to sit down when he was matter the nether? You see, Rabbi Nachman said, in any position, you could be matter the nether. So, that those who say that the dying can't just be made for the nether, he has to ask the, the Nidon, why did you do it? And why do you have charat on the nether? That needs some clarity. And that's why Rabbi Gamliel needed to sit down. No, he could just do it off the bat, and therefore it doesn't need any uh, any special uh, any special uh, uh, mindset. Zok to Gemara Vayter. Damer Rabbi Bachal and Rabbi Yechidin. My my pasuk lay Rabbi Gamliel who gavert. What was the conversation there? In fact, if you're saying Rabbi Gamliel holds that he had to find out why the guy was chayzer uh, on his nether, <coughs> what was the story? What was it? So he said as follows: Yesh boite kimat keres. There are certain promises that poke a person, puncture a person like a sword, like a sword puncturing them. But when the chacham come and their and their matanether, it saves you from that. So when Rashi tells us the Karmelei ilo yisur yadeya sheosher lindor the chayiv misa ata. Had you know that it's also to make a nether and you're chayiv misa because the nether is like a sword that punctures you. But the chayv misa ata love klum ha yisur neider. Would you have made another? Varmer lahech lo. He said no. So that's what Rabbi Gamliel used to be mocked for another. Kalaboyta roy lulek Rabbi Chera ela shalosh lachav marfet. So that's why that's how Rabbi Gamliel was able to be mocked for his name. Amar marv ein marvin al oichum. Another thing you learn is that you're not allowed to walk by if there's food on the floor. You have to pick it up. Amar biyach mishum b'pshim ben yachai lashonu l'bedaris rishonim. In the olden days. Then, you, if you saw food on the floor, you had to pick it up. Because there was no kishav done on them. People do a lot of kishav mavirin. There could be kishav on this bread, and therefore you shouldn't pick the bread up. It could damage you. So you ignore the bread nowadays, even though really you're not supposed to ignore food on the floor, but there's a danger inherent in picking up a loaf of bread. It might be inflicted, infused with kishav. Tana, we learned. Shleimin ma'avirin, pesisin ein ma'avirin. Full loaves of bread are are breads that people used to put kishav on. So there you can't pick them up if they're on the floor. But broken pieces are not used for kishav. And since they're not used for kishav, you have to pick them up because ein ma'avirin alayim. Amr Basu Rashi. If Asi told Rashi, pesisin le'avdin, are you telling me that kishav machers don't cast spells on broken pieces of bread? But Ksibit says in the pasuk. The women were mechalani el ami to my nation. So you see that they did make kishiv with broken pieces of bread. So how can you say kishiv is not chal and broken pieces of bread? The pasuk says that they did kishiv with broken pieces of bread. So after more, the shockly bad value. They didn't make the kishiv. The pasuk doesn't mean that they did kishiv on those things. It means they were hired to do kishiv, and they were paid. By those who hired them with broken pieces of bread. So the Pasuk is saying they were machalmi over some pieces of bread that they thought as a pain. And one more line, on Rapshesh Shum Rabbilos Ben Azaria, Rapshesh says the name of Rabbilos Ben Azaria, Yochlani, live there as Kolo Oilum Kulim in Adin. I'm able to potter up everybody from any type of din. Raji says, La Asul Lavoy, Mi Yoim Shechar Besamit Vishpat Achlov. I can get them off. If I was their lawyer, I'd be able to get them. <coughs> acquitted from any of they did from Churban Beis Hamikdash until now, because I can consider them drunks. I can plead insanity. I would plead insanity, and that's how I would get everybody off from all the bears that they did. So on this note, let's have an insanely successful day. It's a